Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Herd Fit Podcast with Dr. Sam Marie and myself, Coach David Syverson. This podcast is aimed at helping anyone and everyone looking to enhance their healthy lifestyle through fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, mindset. Welcome back to the Herd Fit Podcast. I'm Coach David Syverson here with my co-host, Dr. and Coach Sam Marie. And for the second time, or third, third time, time, we are here yeah. with our special guest, Amy Edelman. Hi, everyone. Amy, thank you for coming back. Thank uh, you. We are now a week out from finishing out the Legends Championship at CrossFit Mayhem in Cookville, Tennessee. And that's what this episode is going to be about. We are going to kind of do a deep dive into workouts, mental state, what kind of goes on, you know, the ups and downs throughout the weekend. We both had, we both went through them as pretty much does every single athlete that goes out there. And, you know, Sam, you know, we'll probably start asking some of the questions. I have the workout, so you don't have to worry about that. We'll get into the scaling a little bit, but I don't want to talk too much about that. We're actually going to do a separate episode on that next week. So just be, be on the lookout for that when it comes to how to scale comps and how you can relate that to your gym and, your, and yourself even. But before we get into the actual workouts, that's like the fun stuff to talk about the actual weekend. Just want to give a shout out and a thank you to... To a lot of people, I'm not going to list them. Like you'll run an award show where you just listen to someone list off 90 people. But Joe Linton, Bob Jennings, those are the masterminds behind the Legends Championship. And then CrossFit Mayhem. And not just Rich Froning and and Rory McKeeran, it, it, the, the entire community at CrossFit Mayhem. They shut down their gym for an entire week. That needs to be known. You know, if you're a CrossFitter, imagine having your gym shut down for an entire week so that strangers from outside the country can come in and, and compete there and use your bathrooms and make them dirty all weekend. So that, I just want to say a huge thank you to the medical staff, to all the volunteers. There was a lot of them. And I actually, this is my third Legends Championship. This was by far the best operation we've ever seen. And I think it's because Bob and Joe are just getting better at what they do every year. They, they put a lot of effort into that, which I love, but they had a huge support system there. And I just want to give a huge shout out. Amy, opening thoughts on just like kind of what the actual experience of that, not even the workouts yet, just the environment, the gym the layout, all this stuff. Yeah, I thought it was amazing. I mean, the preparedness of it, the professionalis professionalism of it yeah. was fantastic. I had mentioned, I think, in something I posted, by far, I think, one of the best competitions that I had participated in. And, yeah. I mean, everything was on time to the T. Yeah. The warm-up area was great. Mm -hmm. So I think it was really well done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely the best warm up area we've ever had. You know, full rig. You had air runners and playing machines. You rarely had to wait for stuff. If you did, it was a, usually a very short amount of time. They corralled us two heats before our heat. And the guy that was in the corral that talked to us prior to the workout, I think his name was DJ, just an awesome dude. And they were so good at explaining standards and us understanding flow so that when you got out there, there weren't any questions on what to do. And uh, I would say two nights before the comp, right? We had that meeting on Instagram live mm -hmm. and they, they went over all the workouts and those are always kind of messy, right? Like you're talking about nine workouts. You have people asking dumb questions and then you have people asking the same question over and over. And it's frustrating to watch. I'm sure it's frustrating for Joe and Bob to do, but in that time they went over every workout and they went over flow. All right. So after this and this workout, you have to move the bar to here and then the box there. And then Amy and I were texting that night and like, I forgot. I, like, I hope someone's going to tell me what to do. <laughs> like you forget. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Yeah. But yeah. what they did a good job of prior to the workout, and it never felt rushed, that they went over exactly what you have to do, what you can't do, reinforcement of standards. And that's just another sign of a competition that used to be at a, you know, a local box. You, know, you sign up, you show up to something now that you're qualifying for, you're paying a lot of money for, you're staying in a hotel for almost a week for, and these guys have matched that level of progression with their judging and the back end stuff. So just a huge shout out to those guys. I, I don't think they could have done a better job, even though I'm sure they said they could. So let's get into, I want to talk about Amy's experience a little bit. All right. And this will maybe tie into, we'll probably get deeper into it with the actual workouts when we get into them. But Amy... If you did not listen to one of the previous two episodes with her on, to sum them up, you know, she, she, at once she got done with quarterfinals this past year, she really amped it up in and out of the gym. She got, from my perspective, probably in the best shape of her life. All right. Would you say I, that? I agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she really, truly went all in. And I think that's one of like, she, you know, there's a lot of positives that I took from her over the weekend, but that was probably the number one thing. And everything kind of just, there are bullet points under that, that she really went all in on, on everything. And Amy, 
let's just talk about where your head was at. You know, we got where your head was at leading up to the comp, but mm -hmm. what, like the travel day, getting there to the hotel, going food shopping, being by yourself for the first time in how mm -hmm. long, right? Very uh, long. Yeah. What was, what were, what was your mindset once you actually landed, like foots on, feet on the ground there? I was definitely nervous. But I felt confident at the same time that I was ready because I think I had done a lot of the prep prior, like we had talked about, just mental prep, physical prep, all of that. So mm -hmm. I did feel confident going in. But of course, it's a lot. It's it's you're in a new place and you have to get yourself familiarized with how to get to the gym, mm -hmm. where to get food, where your hotel, all that stuff. Yeah. So I think it was great that we went down on Tuesday yeah. and we had the full day Wednesday to kind of get ourselves together. Yeah. together. And I think that was that so was important. Yeah. That was huge. Yeah. We got to move a little bit in the gym, in the hotel. On Wednesday. So, yeah. yeah. So that made, I think, a huge difference. Yeah. There yeah. are people that show up Wednesday. Yeah. They go to the check-in, they compete the next I day. I do that. Like, I, I really think that extra day, just that extra night of sleep in between, yeah. if you can swing it, you know, financially and work-wise, logistically, it's right. the way to go. Yep. I mean, I spent Wednesday, I think, cooking my food yeah. for the week and prepping all of that so I didn't have to do it Right. at night after the workout. Yep. Stuff, so so we, yeah. we were, you know, we were, we took a car to the airport, we checked in, all this stuff, right? We still don't have the workouts before the flight. Right. Like, oh, man, like, I want something to think about, you know, yeah. and I want to have less anxiety about it. So we're on the plane and we're at the point of the flight where pre-flight, where they start saying, all right, guys, put your phone in airplane mode, store this away, store that away. I'm like, I'm going to check the website one more time. You know, I clicked refresh 87 times in the last two hours and all the workouts are right there. So, you know, we're starting to like pull out of our, our spot at the airport. And I'm like, screenshot, next workout, screenshot. I'm not even looking at the workouts. I'm just trying to screenshot everything. And then I sent them all to Amy, like right before you start to lose service. Yeah. So that at the very least, we had all of the workouts on our phones that we could stare at, stress about for the entire flight down. When you started to get, and we'll get into the workouts, when you started to see the workouts, where did that help or hurt the mindset? I think it helped. I think it definitely helped because it was nice to see it and see what we're going for or doing and then preparing for it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, I was like, all right. I can do that. Yeah. I mean, of course, there was a couple where I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no matter um, yeah, no matter what, non-workouts, you're yeah. always going to have a couple. Of course. That, but, and it should be like that. Right. Right? Yeah. Like, And if it's not, then you're just a monster. Right. <laughs> you're just good yeah. at everything. Yeah. But I, 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 th I bring that up because I think it's really important that obviously 90% of the anxiety that someone has prior to, it could be injury, sickness, blah, blah, blah. But also, they just don't know the workouts. You know, and I could create a workout program for nine weeks that it's a good fitness test that I would get buried in that I also can create one that I would do well in. And same with you. So you know there's a little bit of hope in there. There's a little bit of mm -hmm. like a chance that it's going to go one way or the other. And I thought that when we saw the way the workouts were, I was like, this is going to be a good weekend for Amy. And and did you feel that way? I did. Yeah, especially the the first three days. Yeah. I was like, all right, I got this. Yeah. I, I can do, I can do the, all this. Yeah. I did, not to go into the details now, but I was like, I didn't, think I would be doing as well as I did those mm -hmm. first three days, right. but I was like, all right, I can hang. All right, good. So yeah. now we kind of know yeah. where Amy's head's at going yeah. into the comp, right? And that's a big part of, of these long comps. Like if you can't keep your head right, I think the issues that come up, they compound. But if you are kind of like confident, you feel good, and you're even maybe on the side of oh, too confident, I actually think that sometimes that helps you out at a competition that th that is this long. It's good to know where your mind's at. So Sam, any opening thoughts? on your perspective of the competition, whether it's the broadcast, the workouts, you know, you've been following it somewhat for the past few years, and then we'll get into the actual workouts. Yeah, we've broken it down every year. So this year clearly appeared the most professional. It always amazes me that they have hundreds of athletes all competing in so many divisions. And you could see that at the end when they have all the pictures of all the athletes are just like, holy crap, this yeah. is huge. This yeah. is as big as the games basically, mm. but for masters. Right. And when I saw the workouts, I, I wanted to not bug you guys too much because yeah. I'm sure so many people are messaging you guys and everything. But when I saw that, I was like, you know, if you listen to our podcast, you heard what you guys were thinking the workouts might be. Mm -hmm. And they were right in line with what you were predicting, yeah. which yeah. means to me a couple things. One is programming does take certain philosophies. Right. And the 
programming philosophy that Legends had was very much similar to what you had. Mm -hmm. And thinking about what they wanted in terms of obtaining the fittest athletes out of the masters, you can take away general principles. And I was just thinking about that when, when I saw the workouts, when I thought about how you guys had trained and I thought, I mean, you never know what's going to happen, but I thought you guys had like a clear shot right down the runway to do really, really well in this competition. I was excited. Yeah. Really excited. I, I feel the same way just in, in regard to that, right? If you go back and listen to what we thought the workouts might be like saying, we were pretty accurate on a lot of them and no, no one said I have information there. And, you know, you could take one or two workouts and switch it up and all of a sudden you're wrong. It, again, it's philosophy, but it's not just with Bob and Joe, who I feel like I jive with programming wise, but also Rich. Yeah. Because Rich did, Froning did, and Mayhem, Mayhem athlete, right? Yep. He, I've always followed his program. I've always looked at his workouts. And again, you can't predict a workouts like this perfectly. It's just not possible. But again, you can see trends and you, he might be offended if he feels like he's being, he's predictable. That's not what it is. It's it's a more macro level, just like broad time domains, combination of movements, looking at the qualifier and seeing the flavors, right? That repeat. So I, I do think that if you have a coach or someone that is into programming, Savan just did a they just did a, a programming breakdown. They should have done a better job with it, but they they those guys know programming. A Taylor Self and, and JR, they know programming, they know competition programming. And it's interesting that you can just kind of nod your head to the workout. Like, I get it. This, this makes sense. This is why this, the, the reps, the time, the location, all that stuff. And so with that said, let's get into the programming. All right. And I want to get, you know, we'll share some thoughts. We don't want to only make it about like our, our workouts, right? We'll talk about a few different things, why a workout like this was in a big event, some of the logistics that you might not be aware of. And then, you know, we'll give some feedback on it. So the first workout was endless ergs. It was seven minutes, max meter row, one minute rest, seven minutes, max C2 bike, one minute rest, seven minutes, max ski erg. And then you combine the meters from all three machines. And that is your score. It's very simple. It's an endurance test. We'd said that there's probably going to be an endurance test that Thursday. You were hoping that, because you wanted mm -hmm. not to have such a shock to the system with like a short, intense workout. Yep. Yeah. And... They yep. gave it, it to you. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, the one thing about CrossFit competing, it's hard to put in things that are this long, 20, 25, 30 minutes, unless you're at the CrossFit Games where you just have more, you have more, you know, flexibility. But when you have 300 athletes that are going to do this workout, just do the math. There's 300 athletes need to all do their own 21 Merc route. They all need three machines to themselves, right? Logistically, it's a nightmare unless you're at a gym like Mayhem where they just, there were more machines there than... So many. I felt like it was that concept too. Yeah. Headquarters. There's just so many bikes and rows and skis, and they all work too. All yes. the all, all the monitors work yeah. the entire time, and it's a long time, right? And you have, you know, there, there's over 300 athletes here. Do some math in your head. You're looking at 30 to 35 heats of that, and it's just a lot to fit in a day. So I do think some people did that first, and, yeah, and the the next one second first, and they kind of flip back and forth. But I do think that when you are going to test fitness over four days, there's got to be something 20 plus minutes, like needs to be, you know, because if you don't ever train anything more than 10 to 12 minutes and you show up to cross a comp, to just, like a local comp, like you could have a, a, a pretty poor aerobic engine and do well at local comps because workouts there are almost never more than 12 minutes. Of course. And, and there's, there's a lot that goes into training that. And that's something that takes a long time to train. Like if I'm going to have Amy go work on that time domain, she's got to work out for 50 to 60 minutes to get better at 20 minutes of work. And like a lot of people just can't do that. So it makes sense. A lot of people just don't train it. And I'm really glad that they put something like that in Amy opening thoughts on that workout. Amy, this is so funny. Uh, she tied for first place in that event. Yeah. Me meters. Yeah. You know, so literally know down how, to the single meter. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was like this seven, is now the second time I've tied. <laughs> 7,185 meters, like 85 meters. One extra meter could have been like a 1% harder pull just one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, I mean, that was a little thoughts. frustrating, but yeah. still like I, it, it, I didn't care. But, yeah. Couldn't have done um, that. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed this one. Like I said, it kind of set the, set the pace, I guess, for the, op to open the competition got me mentally ready and I knew it was something that I could do really well at. Yeah. 
So what are your thoughts on that yeah. workout, Sam? Well, both you guys took first in it. So you guys were both well prepared for the endurance. Yeah. It was not broadcast live. They only broadcast two days worth. And I will say, obviously, this would not be a very good broadcast event because watching a lot of people sit there on bikes and ergs, just really, really, yeah. really, really boring. And you don't even know where anyone is right? Like, either. And yeah. from a programming yeah. standpoint, they did say in Savan, like really, really boring. Yeah. But necessary and that's why they purposefully did not broadcast this one the other thing is is that the fact that they did meters as opposed to calories also changes your mm -hmm. approach to the workout yep because it's not about power output it's about distance mm -hmm. and you obviously sort of work differently to achieve both of those yep. goals i felt but fortunately david lancelot <laughs> did stream it for our mm -hmm. group our facebook group on uh, bison and it was a really long workout. Like, and they, I saw the heats. They started early in the morning and mm -hmm. they didn't finish till well, well late into the afternoon to, yeah. to get through all this. So yeah. kudos first to programming to be dedicated to spending the resources on such a large, yep. boring yep. endurance event, which was necessary because like you said, if you're going to, they, their goal was to test for the fittest athlete, right. period. Right. And that's what they did. They didn't short it. They didn't say, well, this is... Just doesn't make sense. We right. Can't do it it's not logistically right. possible. They spent right. the resources, time, and money to do so. And uh, kudos to you guys for crushing it. Mm. Crushing it. Logistically, what they did really smart, too, was they had heat one on the rower, right? They do the, There's seven minutes. One minute rest, seven minutes on the bike, so that no one's on the rower at that time. All right. And then the skier was behind the bike. So after that second seven minute interval, there's a one minute rest. You would start on the ski, but they brought the next heat out right. for their row. Yep. So there was a point when someone was on the ski, that means another heat was on the row. So you did have 35 people on the floor at once. Yeah. Overlapping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, and it, but it never felt like you were on top because there's that one, that transition that space. Period. Yep. So you can get to this bike and put your seat where you wanted to make sure the monitors are good. Right. You know, like they, they said, could clean all the sweat off before right. the next athlete. I felt bad for whoever had my skier after it I was, it was so wet. <laughs> it was humid that day. It was, that was humid. a really humid yeah. day. And I we remember just... looking on the floor for the ski and I just grabbed some chalk, whatever was like <laughs> a clumpy wet piece of chalk. And I'm like, all right, let's go. <laughs> so I, I want to give Amy a shout out for a strategy that she gave me. You know, like, I, again, when I, I, I never can turn off my coach switch, I just can't do it. But you know, when I'm down there, there are selfish decisions you make, like have to, have to compete. Right. And, but you know, when you're down there, like, I'm usually the one like, Hey, like, Hey, try this, try this. So you gave me a piece of advice on the row that honestly, I think made the difference for me. She goes, you know, obviously when you start your seven minute row, you, you row hard for 10, 12 seconds, you settle in. She goes, but she goes every minute on the minute, I would do four really hard pulls. Wow. Just like, so I'm, I'm pulling like a 140, 143 for the entire time. But every minute on the minute, I would pull down to 132 for like four or five pulls. Wow. Just get like that little thing. Because it never blew you up. Yep. And then you were able to go back and settle in. So mm -hmm. you mul multiply that by seven. It's probably worth, I would say it's yeah. probably worth a hundred meters. Yeah. And it's I'm looking to my right and left the entire time. And the, like, I'm looking at the people's monitors. Like, all right, on the second ahead here, second ahead here. Oh, we're tied. But they were not doing that. Right. And that made the difference. Amy, where'd you get that idea from? When I was at CrossFit 2 and 2, mm, okay. the owner there was a big rower. Mm -hmm. And he, I remember for like, I think he called it, I think it's called a power 10. I don't know. Yeah. But normally it's like a 10 stroke power, 10 stroke. And then it just for like longer rows, just to. One, to get, like, your energy back up yep. so you don't get stuck in, like, the mundane, like, all right, yep. I'm rowing. It's hard. It's hard to maintain um, the same pace for that long. Yeah, right. just it is. is. You know. And it just kind of sparks you, I think, physically and mentally. Yeah, it's, like, stimulating. Deeply. Yeah. And yeah. you you know you're almost getting a competitive advantage a little bit because no one else is right. doing it. Right. Yeah. You know, everyone rows hard for the first 10 seconds. Of and course. Then... Gave away our secret. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't ever, guys, it didn't work. It didn't work. I got hurt. That was why I got hurt. You know? <laughs> but that that was a huge deal. I actually did try to do that again on the bike and the ski, and I couldn't. I was too tired. Oh, okay. Yeah. I couldn't do it on the ski. I'm sorry, on the bike. Yeah, the bike was hard. The ski, I think I did it for like the first few minutes yeah. and i was like oh, yeah done. <laughs> i was so tired yeah but the last thing i'll say about this workout and i didn't really think about this until the day before and i didn't know if i should text amy because we were like what should we do what should we do with the pace the bike erg is worth twice the meters 
Yeah, I didn't realize right? that. Like when you row 500 meters in t- on, on a row, yeah. that's 1,000 meters on the bike erg. Oh, because you're more efficient on the bike, right. Gerg, and you're doing more on right. the bike. So basically, I think my score is around 8,000 meters, like mm. a little above it. Mm. And that, like, basically right around 2,000 row, 2,000 ski, 4,000 bikes. So if you sold yourself on the bike, Gerg, you could have gotten more meters. Right. Like, I feel like, and I went into it saying, all right, I'm going to try to do the bike. I am not good on that thing. Mm. I couldn't get it below, like, 150. Mm. Row and ski, 140s, you know, like, mm. yeah. and... I think there's a lot of athletes that are the opposite. Like if you're a lower body dominant or you just have a biking background or you yeah. train the bike a lot. Right. That was something that I think could have helped people that I'm not sure everyone truly realized. Oh, I see. Did you change your damper at all on the bike? I tried to. Yeah. And every time I do it, like it would go up, jack Like I'm like losing concentration. I did it like three times. I'm like, I'm losing meters on this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did see a few people do that. Like when you sprint as hard as you can on a machine, you, you definitely go faster when the damper's higher. So yeah. like I was thinking maybe for the last 30 seconds, do it real quick. Mm. But I was kind of like worried about just the act of doing that would slow me down too much. And mm. I did that in the last minute. Yeah. I think the last minute I put it up a little bit. And then the last 30 seconds, I pushed it up all the way. And I was like, just go. Did the pace go down? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good. Now oh, that definitely yeah. helps you. So too bad you didn't do it a minute, one second. Before. I know. Because- <laughs> one meter. She still got the hundred points. Too. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, that's the most important part. All right, so that yeah. was workout one. There was no scaly for that. I don't think everyone did the same thing. The next one, workout number two, Benjamin Button. This was a 15, 12, 9, double dumbbell thrusters, double dumbbell box step ups, not step overs, and then the tank push, which is basically a sled on wheels. You basically had to go down and back twice. That was 100 feet total. Definitely 100% workout was about leg stamina. Just being like you, your legs never get a break in the workout. You're squatting, you're stepping up, or you're pushing a sled. And that's what everyone said about the workout. It wasn't even that hard, like lung wise, your legs were just burning. Mm-hmm. Amy, opening thoughts. I actually really like this one. Mm-hmm. I think it was one of the harder ones physically. And like I felt it the most. I think I felt this one the most afterwards. But I think I was able to push the hardest in this one. And I actually really, I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. It was better than I thought it was going to be for both yeah. of us. Like I thought both of us, that was going to be like, a, I call it damage control. Like try yeah. not to get your butt kicked. Don't worry about winning it. And it worked out. And I'm trying to think, is there a common training thing that we have in the background? Is there something that we did or something that we just have that helped us do better than what we thought? What did you think made the difference? in the workout of maybe exceeding your expectations. If there um, is anything, there might not be anything that stands well, out. Well, I think like for the thrusters, I know I had trained heavy thrusters. Yep. I mean, I did dumbbell thrusters, I think with 50 in yep. each hand. Yep, yep. So that I think helped a lot with the 35. Yeah. You also dominate step-ups. You just, I mean- They, they have pr- very long legs. Yeah. <laughs> You, I mean, they were not easy for you. No, like that no, no, no. I they watched, were not. that was one of the workouts I watched you do yeah. and that you were in the pain cave. Yes, I was. But, but I was able to everything be there was unbroken. and stay there. Yep. You were unbroken. Uh, which is, I think, one of the reasons why I liked that workout. Yeah. It hurt really bad, but I was mm-hmm. able to stay in it. Yeah. So we, we both on the sled, but one thing I noticed about other people on the sled is they get there. And this is a lesson for every crossfitter to learn if you're trying to pursue a score is when you walk to another movement, right? I'm pretty sure we all walked or maybe lightly jogged, maybe jogged as if like we had poop in our pants or something like that. But like <laughs> you get to the sled, a lot of people get there and they stop. They regroup, they take two breaths and they go. And you would see this a lot on the sled. They push the sled 25 feet. They stand all the way up. They walk to the other side. They put their hands on the sled. They take another breath and they go. And I knew I, w- I don't cycle squatting and stepping up as fast as others. I, so you have to find a way to make up for that. And what we did was we got to the sled. And the second my hand such a sled, I'm pushing it. Like, I'm not even lined up yet. I'm just going to start pushing it. And then when you right. get to the turnaround, you don't stand up. Like, I literally like, would run to the other side and start pushing it again before I'm lined up. And you just push, 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 push. And that picks up three, four seconds. And there's a lot of turnarounds. There's 16 turnarounds or 15 turnarounds in that, in that workout. And that, if you can pick up two seconds per, you know, that adds up, you know? And I think a lot of people that if you're trying to compete, it's not always, I need to get fitter. Yes, you do always need to get fitter. But if you can pick up two, three seconds here, 11 times in a workout, that adds up. You should see the margins in some of these workouts. Really like close. you're third place. And then if you were 15 seconds slower, you're, 
12th place. And it's, if you multiply that by nine events, like that is often the difference. Transition yeah. time makes so much of a difference. Yeah. When we work out at the gym, one of the things I always do is when we're running, everyone will come in the door and then walk mm -hmm. back to where they started. I am a very slow runner, but I will not walk once I get in the door. I will jog pretty quick right to where my dumbbell is or barbell is. And that makes my slow running time. It saves me at least five, six seconds. They got gassed running hard, but I run at a medium pace and I just run right into the gym and I pick up that effing dumbbell or yeah. barbell and yeah. I just keep going. It makes a difference. And that those transition yeah. times add up. And especially on Wednesdays when I coach, we're doing a lot of cardio motor type stuff. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, and they're, they're picking up on it. Yeah. Transition time makes a huge difference. Yeah. It's part of the workout. Don't sit there, go. Like just, yeah. just find the pace that allows you to not rest. Right. Yeah. I will say when I watch this one, the first thing is I think Savan, their programming comments, they were absolutely right. I think the tank push should have gone first, then the thrusters and step ups, because that would have made for, not that this was broadcast either. David actually live streamed it and I watched it, mm. but it would have made for a more exciting mm. finish right. to see people finish off on the thrusters and box step up yeah, the nines. Yeah, because the tank doesn't really move fast to no. make it yeah. like right. Right. exciting. I was it's like watching a turtle race. Yeah. It is. <laughs> I will I will say though, I was impressed with Amy because you finished. And I know that that torque tank, there's a, a pace that you can go that's not so hard, but to increase by, it's a very fine it's line. It's right. And then if you go harder, it's exponentially harder to make it go faster. Yeah. Yeah. But you made that thing at that last, those Thanks. last 25 or 100 feet, like you were moving on yeah. that thing. I was like, how I did you get it to somebody was, was, I was close with somebody. I didn't look over there once during the workout because I physically couldn't. I was right. like, I can't. Right, right. <laughs> but I knew something was happening. So I, knew, I was like, I got to go. <laughs> like 10% faster is like a 50% more effort yeah. Yeah. type of thing. And I was right. really impressed yeah. with that finish. For, Thank you. And both of you guys did awesome. You finished in second and you finished in fifth. Yeah. So you guys, after two events, were like, yes. Yeah. Right? I yeah. Think, yeah. I think we were in, both in first after the first day. Yeah. Which is just yeah. cool. Just both from Bison. Like, that's just like a cool thing to me. That's probably selfish. But like, I just thought it was cool. Yeah. Well, I think from a confidence building standpoint, yes. to, to finish first on the first day, sort of legitimized that you guys Belong. belonged yep. and that you guys yep. were in good position. Yep. Yeah. It felt, it felt good. Yep. My yeah. one critique on the workout would be, and I actually, they said this on Savannah, I was thinking the same thing while I was down there, is... If you are going to keep the sled last and you kind of want to know who's in front, I would have made the, if it was possible, I'm still not positive if it was, to make the sled 50 feet down, 50 feet back. Mm. Because sometimes when you're pushing a sled, like at, there's people that get lapped in that workout. So you're pushing a sled like a slow turtle, right? And there's other people doing it too, but you don't know if they're on their first trip down oh, and back right. or yeah. their second. Yeah. And I think it would have been cool if they kept the boxes down further. And they made the sled pushes go 50 feet down. Because now you yeah. know who's in front. Right. The other ones, you're not really sure. Right. Yeah. So I, I, that would be my one kind of critique on that workout. Because again, I think one thing you guys need to know about these workouts, you have to test fitness, logistics have to work, but you do want to make it as fun to watch as possible. Right. Whether it's a spectator or someone watching on a stream, you know, you don't ever want to be like, what round are they on? Mm -hmm. Who's in front? Mm -hmm. You know, and that that's part of it. Yeah. And I think on the, the, the dumbbell and box movement. Yeah. You had helped me a lot with that too. Yeah. Where to put your dumbbells, how to move your, because you had to move your dumbbell and then move your box to the next section. I see. But you're trying to move this big wooden box, but you have your dumbbell somewhere. Mm -hmm. So Dave, I'd watched Dave do it before and I noticed that he stepped over the box. Right. To on his last rep. And then he took his dumbbells and then he told me later, move your dumbbells to the side. Right. So that way you can just slide your box. Because ah. I think some people, especially for the women, like where our handles were, mm -hmm. they were on the side as opposed to the men who were on top. top. Mm -hmm. Easier to pick it up. So we would have to like flip it and move it. And he said like some women were trying to like pull it over their dumbbells. And yeah. it was kind of a, a mess yeah. until that was figured out. Yeah. But. That's, it's that's helpful. It hel it's helpful to have other people, whether it's a coach or just someone you know competing, like there's subtle things. Like when you're competing, it's part of what makes it stressful. Like every little thing matters in your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably too much. That's like one thing I didn't do a good job of this weekend, but it's like every little thing does, like the seconds matter. Mm -hmm. So if, how do you get your box from point A to point B? If, if you don't put thought into it, you might be losing it on some time. Yeah. And it take, took energy. Yeah. Like it took work to have to move. If you had to move your box over the dumbbells every single time, that's yeah. exhausting. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 
All right. So workout three, we both did this workout four. We're just going to do them in order as listed. So we're on day two now and Bison is actually doing this wad on Friday. And yeah, it's Amy's birthday on Friday. So right. she's like, you're actually going to have us yeah. do, <laughs> have to do like, this really? again. <laughs> uh, this, really? one, this one's called Unforgiven. Love the workout because it's so classic CrossFit. That's why I really want Bison to do it. Five rounds, 18 toes of bar, nine shoulder to overhead, 54 double unders. All right. The shoulder to overhead was 135.95. It went down to 115.75 for Masters 50 plus. And then 60 plus, 95, 65 plus, 75, 65, 55. And they also in this workout had the toes of bar decrease for 50 plus and the jump rope decrease once you got to 50 plus. So stimulus wise, it was pretty much the same for everyone. It was toes of bar, sh shoulder, to head, shoulder to overhead unbroken pretty much. And then, you know, can you keep your shit together on the double unders? I think the biggest separator in this workout, I think what got tested the most were the toes of bar. Like if you were someone that could do 18 in a row or a big chunk on that first set, but on set three, four, it turns into twos, threes. That's where you would see a lot of separation. I, I passed, I think three or four guys in my heat on the last two rounds of toes of bar. Hmm. We're all pretty much the same speed, jump rope and shoulder overhead, but the toes of bar, that's all, that's, that's 90 reps in under 10 minutes. You know, it, it's a lot. Amy, opening thoughts on that workout, How, because you were a little nervous going into this one. I was, yeah, because of the the toes to bar. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm I'm okay at them, but not, it's not my, my strongest. But I think my first three rounds, I felt pretty good. And then round four, I kind of declined a little bit on, my, on the number I did in my sets. And then I remember the last round of my toes to bar, I think I had to do like a couple twos. Yeah, maybe like a towards single the end. in there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that definitely slowed me down, but, uh, but I like this one. This yeah. one was, it was fun. Like you said, just a good classic good CrossFit, crass workout. CrossFit workout. Yeah. yeah. Same yeah. Op opening thoughts on this workout because you are doing it Friday. You better be here. I was debating <laughs> whether to do the 35 like plus or the 50 plus like. I'm going to, I'm going to push the gym to do the age scale. Appropriate. Okay. Yep. yep. Okay. That's cool. And I will write down RX like, you know, if example, Sam, if you do 115.75 and 44 dubs, it's yeah. going to be RX. So Amy finished ninth, so it was cap plus 10. And the Dave, you finished sixth, 848. Uh, it, it just, I don't know. I didn't watch it. I wasn't, I didn't, this is one I wasn't able to go back and watch, but it just looked like a toast to bar workout. To yeah. Me. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I think everyone was very positive in general about this workout. Yeah. I didn't see anyone think. Yeah. Yeah, like kind of fun to watch. A lot of changing back and forth. Yeah. They, they had us move up the jump rope every section so you can kind of see who's in front. Yeah. That kind of got a little hairy. Some people just don't jump in the right spot. And they like, you know, they move back a little bit. They move forward. Mm -hmm. So that's me. Yeah. It, it, the, it This is probably a tough one for the crowd to know who's on what round. Mm -hmm. Unless the, the positive is there's only eight people in your heat. So there's not that much to keep track of. So it's funny how basically all eight of us were together. After the first two rounds, like no one was really pulling ahead. No one's falling. But then once round three came, like once the, I always say like the middle of the workouts, that's usually where things are won and lost, not the end. And that's, it's, it was all toes bar. Like you said, that was a toes bar test more than the other. If they wanted to make it a more balanced gymnast lifting test, the barbell probably should have been another 30 pounds mm. for the guys and 20 for the girls. Yeah. So that, that was, that, that was a fun workout. Bison, if you're listening, you are going to be doing that on Friday. All right. The other workout on Friday, this one. This one got my attention the most when I first saw it. I'm like, that's a cool workout. Yeah. It was called Save by the Bell. All right. So you have three intervals here, right? First one is three minutes. The second one is two minutes. The third one is two minutes. All right. At the start of every interval, you have to run 200 meters on the air runner. I had to run. They, they really switched the distances up on us. We we're a little confused here, but I had to run 250. Amy had to run 200. Older A groups. I think basically every two age groups, they reduced the run a little bit. Don't need to get that into that too much. Just think macro level here. You have to do a really hard run on the air runner. That lasted about 45 seconds to a minute, all right? And then the remainder of your time, you're doing as many alternating hang dumbbell snatches as possible until you get to 75 reps, all right? So the workout, the task is get 75 hang dumbbell snatches done as fast as possible after you run hard. And then after every interval, there's a one minute rest. And... The, the, I think the catch here was it was a heavy dumbbell. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you first see it, like, oh, dude, toss that thing around. The RX for the guys in my group was 70 pounds. 
and Amy's was 50. And we did just work with a heavy dumbbell mm -hmm. a couple weeks prior to yep. the comp. Amy, what were your thoughts on two things? It wasn't from the ground. And I actually could make a case it's easier from the ground mm -hmm. than it is from the hang. And then also the weight. The, the weight, I wasn't concerned about moving the weight. I, it was more of, can I hold on to it and for how long? Right. Because I knew I could snatch it, but I didn't know if I, how long it could go like un, unbroken for. Right. Yeah. And then I, I just, my, I was like, I don't want to go back on to the runner in <laughs> that last two yeah. minutes. Right. So. We, we both thought going into that workout, it is possible to finish in two intervals. So mm -hmm. like you, you get down, so just, you just do some math in your head. How many snatches can you do in a minute? Oh, 30. Okay. So you're going to have two minutes to do snatches on, on that first interval. You, if you're moving well, you don't drop it. That's going to be close to 60 reps. You're only going to have 15 left. So I thought the best scores would be you run, do your 60 snatches, you run again, you have 10 to 15 left. And that is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. I had 65 done on that first interval, but I got beat on the second run. So I think a couple guys passed me and uh, we both finished in that second interval. And I say the majority of athletes did too. Not, I think, not all. I think there was a maybe one or two women in my heat that yeah. didn't. So my question to Bob and Joe, maybe we'll get them on at some point, ask them, was their intended stimulus to be like, all right, a few people finish in the second interval or almost everyone does. And when I first saw the workout, I was thinking more people would not be able to hold on to the heavy dumbbell for that much time. And I think I saw Bob comment on Savans. They just didn't have enough heavier dumbbells mm -hmm. mm. for so like, I think they maybe were thinking that would have been better at 80 pounds for guys, mm -hmm. 60 for girls. Mm -hmm. And now you're talking, all right, you can't hold on to yeah. it for the full two minutes. What were your thoughts on yeah. that, Sam? Yeah. It looked like nobody finished. There was no way they were planning on anyone finishing in that first interval. Yeah. Right. And so you had to sell the second run to try to get back and do your, you know, remainder of your dumbbell snatches. Yep. How many did you have left, Amy, after that first interval? I think I did 58. Okay. Peach in the first. Peach so. <laughs> well, Wait, but she found a better spot. She, you finish she, fin <laughs> she, <laughs> you work out? she finished third. You finished fourth. Uh, third. So, 525. Yeah. So I'm telling you. <laughs> rematch. Re re rematch, at, rematch at the Reese house. With <laughs> I don't think I have a. No, I do have a 70, unfortunately. I'll bring, I'll bring one. I'll bring one. <laughs> but yeah. So. You know, it it was really about getting that second run in and then just, like you said, hanging on to that heavy snatch. Yeah. yeah. And I think everyone thought this was a fantastic workout for those reasons. The ground thing, I think, was for people's back, right? To protect it a little for bit. For sure. They were already pulling from the ground multiple times. Yeah. Stand back cleans, ad lifts, and, and power cleans. Yeah. You were going to say, Amy? I was going to say, I forgot to comment that on that on that before but i think from the hang i was a little bit concerned because i was like i normally don't pull from the hang it's yep. usually from the floor yeah but i'm sure i would have finished it would have taken me longer too yeah it probably would have been a little slower i just feel con like i like that feeling of switching and like not having to stop the inertia right. like we were all yeah. lit up i don't know about the girls the guys yeah. we were so lit up forearm forearm yeah. bicep because like the the hardest part of the workout was not moving it above your head it was stopping the inertia mm -hmm. in the hang. So that's just all bicep. And then you're yanking it back up. And I like dumbbell snatches, but you could almost get like a little bit of like a recoil at the bottom. Yeah. You get, you build momentum with rubber hitting rubber. And I just feel like, and it's not as taxing on the arm. So I, I don't, I, I would actually, but it was smart of them to do it from the hang. Because I'll tell you what, a lot of people don't practice that. Hang dumbbell snatches for speed and weight. I, I honestly, I just don't see it that often. and with especially with masters but i even think with any kind of athlete when you're doing a lot of fast aggressive pulling from the ground which we did multiple times throughout the weekend that one with the run I, that bet would have jacked people up big time like i bet a lot of people would have gotten jacked up if they, so that was like a good decision from a fitness perspective mm -hmm. a preparation perspective but also when you program these events there is a certain level of responsibility that the guys programming have for the athletes. Of course. Because honestly, we're going to do whatever you tell us to do. Right. Right. And if someone's a little too diehard, like, you know, like if you know, it, it could, it could end up hurting a lot of people, hmm. especially with those age groups. I also thought just last thought on that. I thought that was one was pretty fun to watch. Like as a spectator, 
Yeah. It's kind of cool to see like who gets off the runner first because you, it's cool to watch people run hard too. Mm -hmm. Like if we ran a mile on that thing, I'm like, all right, this is boring. But running, wa watching people run 90, 95% speed is fun. And then it's like, it was loud in there too. It was, and, it was loud. Like, it was fun. Like I hear yeah. Ash's voice in my head still yeah. like, don't you put that thing down. <laughs> She goes, hurry up. <laughs> hurry. I'm like, I'm trying. <laughs> but, uh, but even on the runner, because like you see, like I remember the girl next to me in the first run got off first. And I'm like, yeah. And I like start sprinting and like yeah. it just, you know, like you need to move. Yep. Yeah. Now, he, someone in the older age group that I talked to last year were kind of somewhat friends, Instagram, right? And he's like, hey, when you're, when you're done with the air runner, he goes, just fall right off it. You know, just like let let the treadmill push you off and it, it'll put you back instead of grabbing the thing, stepping on the side, getting mm -hmm. off. He goes, I'm telling you, it's going to make a difference. And in my head, it was like, what are you thinking before the workout save? I'm like, I'm going to fall if I try. <laughs> but the guy next to me, the guy, Ryan Smith, he ended up winning the whole thing. I beat him by one second in that workout. And but I think. I had 65 after the first set. He had 60. Oh. And I finished one set. So he beat me on the second run, but I watched the video, Dave's video. He had this technique of getting mm -hmm. off the air onto the dumbbell. I was like, I got to practice that. Yeah, like, that needs to be practiced. It was literally like, got to his 250, judge says done. And he basically just like jumps off, like the thing just propelled him back to his dumbbell. And he was on it in like one second. Like mm -hmm. I'm grabbing the sides, stepping off to the right. side. Don't get her. Yeah. You know, like be yeah. careful. And so that's something that about that workout, there's skill in everything yeah. you do. Like it, it really, it, you get reminded at comps, like how you get off an air runner matters. Mm -hmm. You know, how you get into a row. We talk about that at the gym sometimes, right? Yeah. How, how many people waste so much time getting in and out of a row mm -hmm. matters. Hmm. Okay. All right. That was the end of day two. I think bo both in a decent spot. Were you in first or second after the day? Do you remember? I think we were both in. I think we I followed think each other. I was in second. Yeah, I was too. So we both just followed each other all day. So now the first workout of day three, CJ. All right, PTSD here. Okay, mm -hmm. cool workout. The gym's gonna be doing this one as well. Twenty one, not this week. Twenty one fifteen nine. Power cleans, guys one fifteen, ladies eighty. Bar facing burpees, classic. Like I love that. There's a twenty one fifteen nine still after all these years. Like mm -hmm. it's like the rep scheme that everyone's like, oh boy, that's yeah. gonna hurt. The weights went down. At 50 plus, down to 95 to 65, and then 60 to 64, it went down again, 75 to 55, and they also reduced the burpees. They did 15, 12, 6 on the burpees, so those, all the, the 60 plusers just did a little, little less work there to maintain the stimulus of, hey, can you sprint through this? So, nasty workout. This is like your Fran type, where you're just sprinting and hoping you can hold on, or like I said, talk to a couple of the guys out there. There is a skill that I'm still trying to develop. I don't think I did a good job here is going 90, 95% speed. Mm. Like going 100% speed, nobody can do that for three minutes. And that this workout was three plus minutes. And, but this workout was too short to like really truly pace. So there is skill and being able to go 90, 95% speed and then being able to pick it up at the end. Both good workouts for us, just movement wise. This was... Amy, opening thoughts on what you saw and what was there anything different about the workout that you did not expect? I just remember it being fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Watching everyone go so fast. Yeah. yeah. I didn't expect. No, I think it was pretty. I mean, I knew I knew people were going to move and I knew people were going to move on the burpees faster than me. And I just had to move the barbell as fast as I could. Mm. But um, I like this one, too. This is yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's, a, it's fun to go as fast as you can sometimes, yeah. you know, yeah. and just, you know, whether you can hold on to it or not, the, right. you know, we preach pacing here all the time, got to be safe. Right. But yeah. sometimes it's fun to like, let's see how fast I can do this. Just go. Sam, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah. I would like to hear what you have to say, because we talked about this and it was a tough one for you for a number of reasons. Amy finished fifth, you finished 15th. So, you know, I know you don't like talking about reasons other than your own personal responsibility about why things mm -hmm. don't always go the way yep. they're mm -hmm. supposed to or that you would hope for them to go. But it also is enlightening for most of us to actually hear the reality of it. I oh, mean, no. if there's a reality to it, you should you should tell us. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely, uh, I've been thinking about this since the flight home. I'm like, man, I de definitely never want to go on, on a public platform and be like, this happened, this happened, you know, mm -hmm. like, because I'll say this, I, I would be pissed if if I either, if I won or anyone that finished behind me in the standings went out and be like, I didn't come in this place because I got this, you know, 
like I just don't you can say that in your own circle to your family and your friends but pu like public platforms like a podcast or even in my opinion social media like it's just not it, it's not a good look so I I went into this workout saying I can win this and I truly felt like I could go out there and had a on the set of 21 I got no reps on five cleans and I did watch the video they they were probably no reps I was not getting my elbows through like we were all muscle cleaning mm -hmm. all going as fast as we could and it's funny I go out I had like the strictest judge in the cop there was one judge there that was the strictest she was pregnant and she was a good judge and she you know you go out there and I'm always introducing myself thanking them for their time I feel like all athletes should do that and I go out there my kind day she goes I will give you no warnings on your elbows I she's like, like i see you and yeah. i know what you're gonna do <laughs> yeah she's like she's like i will give you no warnings on your elbow because the head judge was saying like hey we're having a lot of problems on this workout mm. guys like people some people are getting their elbows through and they're not getting no rep like you have to show not a true like front squat front rack you just got to get the elbows in front past parallel right yeah and so if you're looking for the side profile you see the elbows come in front yeah i i turn around my first rep no rep and it was it was legit i watched the video and then I do like four or five, no rep again, four or five, no rep again. So I ended up doing 27 or 28 cleans on the, uh, 26 cleans on that first work on the first set. And I was still on the burpees first and I'm like, okay, like, and this, that workout was similar to what I talked about last year. Remember last year I talked about that double dumbbell front squat where I just felt like it was so intense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like we're all on top of each other. Yeah. It was loud. Yeah. And that workout. I try to keep awareness of where people are. I had no idea. Mm. You were in the front row, so they had a staggered too. I was in the back row. You were oh, you were in the back. Right. Okay. I, I, I didn't that's right. I didn't see you do that work. Yeah. I was in okay. the I was in the back row. And yeah, no, they didn't post the video of the city. It was an <laughs> ugly video. So anyway, right, I don't want to get too deep into it, but the it was just a lot of commotion. And there's bars flying. You see people doing burpees. You don't know where people are. Mm -hmm. I hear Ash screaming her head off, right? Mm -hmm. And I get to the 15s on the bar first. I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm in a good spot. Like, mm -hmm. I always feel like if you can get through the 15s, you're mm -hmm. going to be fine. Right. Get through the 15s, starting to feel a little heavy, a little dizzy, do my set of 15 burpees. Now I get up from the 15 burpees. I'm still the first person back to the bar. Mm. But I couldn't pick it up right away. I was like dizzy as hell. Okay. Right. So I sit there. I wait five seconds. Everyone's like, hurry up. What are you doing? Right. Pick it up. And both my legs start to lock up. Both quads cramping yep so i'm just basically curling the bar i had to drop the bar after six and i had to hold one in the hang so like i'm getting past a little bit there and the second i start doing those nine burpees i think there was still only one or two guys that started before me i was shut down both quads were cramping and i'm i don't know what i'm gonna do with the video it's actually kind of like good to watch but it's also kind of hard to watch mm -hmm. like could not jump over the bar to the point where like have you ever done like a really the highest box jump you've ever done? Think mm -hmm. about that. What mm -hmm. would you do? Probably like you like load up. That's how I was feeling every rep. And every time it just sees, sees. And I had a few reps where I lit, my body went this way and my knee went the other direction. And it happened three or times. So I think one of those reps, I kind of jacked it a little bit. Your, and your left knee. Left knee, which, yeah, which I hurt in summer. And the, uh, there was a rep where I jumped over the bar and my, I didn't get over, my foot hit it and landed flat on my face. And I just laid there. And like mentally, I'm still in it. I'm like mm -hmm. saying like, I'm fucked. Like you can hear guys, pet, like mm -hmm. again, margin is so small there. Right, like, right, right. You go from third place to 12th like that. Mm -hmm. And after the workout, can't get up. Both my legs. My judge is like, you guys got to go. Like they're like really on time. I'm like, I need help. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you have to go. I'm like, I need help. Like I can't stand up. So I get carried off the floor. Medics are on me. Can't walk. I'm dizzy for like a good 45 minutes. They're still like hospital, like we're not mm -hmm. sure. Ash is afraid I'm going to have a seizure, all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm pale already, like I'm white as a ghost. They said like, you didn't look like you were there. And that kind of got cleared up eventually, like severely dehydrated from being sick a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. right? And that's where I, it is a personal responsibility. I could have done a better job leading up to the comp. I'm taking DayQuil and NyQuil like for three weeks straight, mm -hmm. including the comp. Oh, you taking, were? I was taking DayQuil a half hour before my workouts. Wow. And guy was like, probably not the smartest thing to do, you know? And I was like, all right, like, I just didn't, I, I wanted to clear my passage, right? Right. And he, uh, so that was like the kind of like, at that point, I kind of knew it was over. A, I came in 15th and B, like my knee on one of those reps, I really jacked my knee up. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Mm -hmm. I still got to finish the weekend out. Mm -hmm. And again, disclaimer, I'm not saying that's where the, that's why the result was the way it was. Have you ever crammed like that ever in your never, entire life? Never. Wow. Never.
I've cramped before, but nothing like that. Like to the point, he literally could not walk off. There was no exaggeration there. I could not walk off. I had one of the medics pull me off and Travis, mm-hmm. one of the competitors that came in third, mm-hmm. kick-ass dude, gym owner in North Carolina, crushed it over the weekend. He helped me come off. So that was like, that's where like my weekend turned and it sucked, you know, yeah. it, and I watched the video, Dave sent it to me after and it's hard. It's hard to watch. And like, I felt bad for Ash. Like when you watch someone that is else, like if I watched Amy go through that, it would have been like- And was hurting. Sure. Like it just like breaks your heart almost, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So that's where that, that, that event went. We had another event. I want to get into it next. It was two hours later. And I still knew like, as I was warming up, I'm like still dizzy, still cramping up. But I was like, I'm doing it. Even if I know it's going to hurt me in the standings. So. I knew how sick you were before you went to the comp. So I was kind of shocked that you pulled it together for those first two days. I thought yeah. I did. And the I wheel, and when the field wheels finally came off, I was like, I couldn't believe you held it together for, yeah. <laughs> for as long but as you did. But he held it together past that too, which is incredible. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like he was like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm like, he, I'm probably stubborn yeah. to a fault with the sick stuff. Like I was really i have not i had a 104 fever for like three days like all that stuff right but i'm like all right the next week we trained i'm like all right i'm getting there i'm still yeah. coughing nonstop. Mm-hmm. and like the funny thing this is i'm funny about it now i get off the flight i didn't even tell amy this i don't know if i did oh, no. i got off the flight to tennessee mm-hmm. and my left ear wouldn't pop and it was so painful mm. and i was trying to play it cool like i couldn't hear out of my left ear mm. and i drove it's an hour five minute drive and you know, I'm a stressful dra- traveler in general, but I'm like, my left eye starts going blurry. I'm so in so much pain. I run to the hotel room and I just bury my face into the, and I'm trying to blow my nose, Googling how to pop your ears. I'm doing all this weird stuff, <laughs> holding my nostrils and blowing up. <laughs> I didn't know it was that bad. I, you definitely I, played it off. <laughs> and I couldn't get it. And I was like, I need, I'm going to go to urgent care. Like it, the two days before the con. Oh my God. And I went to, I went to Walmart and I got a decongestion. I'm buying everything. I think I bought $80 worth of stuff and I used two of them and uh, went to bed that night and it cleared up the next one. The decongestion helped, but they always say, if you're that congested, you got to do something before the flight. Mm-hmm. And I didn't. Mm. And you get, so, I did all this research on it. You get so clogged in between like that passageway between your nose and your ear. You station mm-hmm. two. And you just can't, you, it won't open up. You mm-hmm. can't, and it was so painful. So that's like, I was still felt like I was still kind of sick there, but because I did well for two days, I'm like, it's fine. I'm fine. Like yeah. it is totally fine. But the hydration, mm-hmm. you know, I always say, when you start to realize you're a little dehydrated, it's too late. Right. Yeah. You know, like yes. you're not, you're not going to fix it by drinking Pedialyte. And, yes. that, and it's hard between workouts too, because you have time, but you don't have that much time. Right. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to sit there and chugging we, water and, and eating and yeah. everything else. And we sweat a lot on the first day. Yeah. Was, for whatever reason, it was humid down there mm-hmm. yeah. that day in that back room with the machines. Yeah. So I, I think that's why I do say, like, in my Instagram post, I, I should have prepared better. That's what I think I really came up short on. I see. Like, that's that's fixable. That is something that's an athlete responsibility. Well, and I so, think when you say, if by the time you realize you're a little dehydrated, it's too late at that yeah, point. Right. Yeah. yeah. You got to so, keep up on that. Yep. That's really a good, good lesson. For sure. Thank you everybody for taking the time out of your day to listen to the Herd Fit Podcast. Be on the lookout for next week's episode.